It is October the 5th, 2024. I'm Chris, and this is the future of photography. Woohoo! The future of photography. Hey, we're back. How is everyone doing? We're all great. <laughs> Things look different for both that's of okay. you. <laughs> that's okay. Fine. That's okay. Uh, yeah, so, um, well, can episode. I kick off? Can I kick, can I kick off? Because, yeah, we were going to kick off. this off, right, so, uh, of, off. of me having a chance to put into last week's conversation, which, uh, which uh, sadly I missed due to prior engagement, which was an enormous family party and uh, was thoroughly enjoyable, and but but I couldn't be on the podcast. So, uh, where, do, where to go? So, so my, my take on this is that... I'm really glad that the three of us do this podcast together because we come at these things from a different angle. And I really enjoyed listening uh, back to the, the the episode that was published on Wednesday, the one that I couldn't be in. Uh, because I like to be, in this instance, uh, the, the one of the three of us that stands at the top of the rabbit hole and throws you a ladder when you need to get out. We need that sometimes, yeah. <laughs> It, and it's not that yeah you know, it's it's not that anything that you said w was in any way it, it inappropriate or incorrect or anything like that it's all it's all cool it's just that it, I, I i and i totally get what it's just i don't feel it the way that you feel it so i've i've changed my mind on it a bit too since last week because um you remember when the first time the the like dali 2 came out and it was like oh my god photography is dead and over the, and the many months that we had it we have on the one hand been fascinated by the quality that can come out of these things on the other hand we have also all learned that um photography we do photography for a different reason we do it to do photography and not uh to like the same way we do a podcast we don't necessarily do it to just be utilitarian and talk about the news we are us we are we're entertainers we we, we have a lot <laughs> we have we have lives we have a backstory we are uh real as opposed to something that comes out of a well, yeah. out of a language Chris, model. So. Chris, we were admonished by Notebook LLM to stay human. It did tell exactly. us. It did tell us to stay human because it celebrated our quirkiness. That was the best our bit. Our humor. I do. That was the I, best bit when the when the AI said, "Stay curious and stay human." That was. I think that should be our. That 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 for me I, is that that's the only four words that need to be said about this topic right that yeah. that that wasn't just a closing tagline that was a summation right for me so, of, of, of and, and everything in this area. yeah subsequently the the um the, the kind of podcasts that have been sent to me subsequently by all manner of friends uh who have tried the same kind of thing i've never heard the ending quite so specific as was to us Stay so human. So it's the same way that uh, artificial photography will replace or has already started replacing some kind of photography. It will not replace yeah, IKEA, yeah. human photography. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, by, by the way, there, there's nothing wrong or morally or technologically with using these tools for what we call utilitarian purposes, whether they be analytical or, or aesthetic. It doesn't rob the human from desiring to create something with their hands, brains, voice, intellect, all of those kinds of, of urges. From 40,000 or 50,000 years ago, there's always been this this urge, this compulsion to express, to basically shout to the universe that you were there, um, that there is some kind of expression. And, and, and differentiating between um, propaganda, which is using, say, visual art or all of AI in order to uh, get people to buy something or to act on something or to change their political awareness of something, um, but just one that creates awe, one creates a moment of, of kind of value of life that is 
ineffable, undescribable. And that quality is a very, I, I want to say human, but it may not be just human. Those of us who live with dogs, they, they have those moments too. Um, so, you know, I think there is a condition of life that is um, appreciative of the nature of the moment of all. So um, one of the reasons I came around was that I just recently listened to a, a, a different podcast called Accidental Tech Podcast. Um, <clears throat> and they have done, they have had the very a similar experience to what we had and they in our latest episode which is episode 607 um which is titled the structure and vibe of a podcast um they they dive into something that they also had created by notebook lm based on their uh, an article they've written so um and they've they've come around in a very similar way that yeah it is definitely going to be useful for some things but it's not what uh, what makes a podcast. So that is the um, that's the one topic. We have two more things that we have a. Could I just could on. I just say there's two ways this could go, right? So if I remember like history classes at school properly and stuff like that, what happens is that there's a bunch of chimpanzees playing around and they're being fairly friendly to each other. Then there's this strange black obelisk, some weird late '60s <laughs> synthesizing noises. And then they all start bashing each other over the head with rocks, right? So for me, there's two ways this can go, right? One, assuming you both get the movie reference, which I know you both do, um, is that actually the AI causes an intervention in human behavior, hopefully not bashing each other over the head with rocks, but, you know, it, how, the, 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 perhaps, perhaps we learn something from it and move on be, you know, and, and evolve better because of it. Um, or secondly, I suppose, um, yeah, it, it all goes horribly wrong, I suppose, and the AIs do take over the world. But, yeah. well, well, you know, there, there is, have you both heard of the paperclip? Oh, yeah, syndrome, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right? paperclip so, maximizer. Oh, I, I have a game about that on my phone. <laughs> yeah, and, and for those uh, it's listening, not a game, watching, Chris really not a game it's called uh, universal paperclip go download it it's it, um if you fun. Uh, give an ai the task of creating let's just say a paperclip um period it will do everything in its power which grows exponentially every day no matter what to create that, even if it means the destruction of all the human race, right? because it only knows its goal. So building in this kind of what, you know, I guess uh, a sense of responsibility to humans is something that I don't believe uh, the developing uh, companies have fully got their hands around because this is, it's growing so fast, the programming is happening so fast, it's eating and scraping off the internet, it's scraping off its own creations, that's why we have hallucinations, it's very um, forceful in its opinions, which may or may not be based on reality, we tend to accept those somewhat. We don't really know where this is going. Um, you know, maybe there's five companies who have the money to create these things that compute power. So, and, and they're competing. And what is their determinative factor? Probably profitability. Uh, the one open source company, Stability AI, is pretty well done. And so now you have, you know, uh, Anthropic, Meta, um, Microsoft, Google, um, open AI. Um, these are all massive investment bundles of tens of billions of dollars with no profitability immediately. And we'll see what happens. Are we right. just paper clips? Do you know what? So, so do you know, I actually learned this week though, how LLMs work, right? Cause you know, everybody says, Oh, we're not sure. Well, what actually happens inside a large language model is there's some blokes in neon suits on motorbikes and they're playing a giant game of snake, right? And then one of them happens to be a very famous actor who is relaunching a camera that we're going to talk about next. There you go. 
Ah, see what, what, I a did there? what a segue. What a segue, sir. <clears throat> that you is are me. amazing. <laughs> that is me being the one of the three of us that is at the top of the rabbit hole. <laughs> get to, so get your job from now on, yes. So that you can <laughs> climb out. All right, <laughs> we... Uh, we <laughs> we want to talk about uh, White Lux again because we already talked about it here. It's the... Um, the revival of the old Japanese um, built until about 2000, uh, wide angle camera, the turret camera. We talked about it here. And wh who's into film knows that camera. And uh, we also talked about that um, Jeff Bridges is bringing that back together with his wife um, and together with Silver Grain Classics, which is a magazine about pho uh, film photography. Uh, Adrian, you are right. They are made in Germany, but I think they target the UK market. So, um, anyway. Yeah, there's um, a bit of both, I think. Yes, definitely. Mm. Anyway, I have the issue of Silver Grain Classics here, um, uh -huh. where th that is an entire issue about this. You can, you can see the format in there. You have to hold it vertically. Nice. Um, and then there's this entire... This entire issue is about uh, White Lux and different photographers and, of course, the project that uh, Jeff Bridges is the, let's say, the, the most visible part of. And, um, yeah, I, I, I went to the magazine. It is, in fact, uh, from last summer. So this completely, I missed this, completely missed this. Because um, I do not subscribe to Silver Grain Classics, I ordered this uh, this issue specifically. Uh, it's the shipping and everything. This thing is produced in Germany, but it, I had to order it from the UK. It was really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, uh, turns out the, for the the company that will build the camera is OPC in Germany. Um, they are. In, let me let me try to get them on the screen here. Um, they are uh, an optical company. They also um, bought the brand Maya Optic Görlitz, which is an old German brand that um, there was some controversy when they bought this brand, but um, they are they are reviving old type of lenses and uh, specific lenses, and. Um, they do they do industrial optics and they have lens manufacturing and so on. So um, they are clearly up to the task. Um, the magazine article talks about they are well into prototyping phase, so they are working on it. Um, there is a documentary being shot on the whole process of bringing it back, uh, shot by Ethan Bohm, which is the director of uh, Jeff Bridges' photo archive. So um, they are taking care of that um jeff bridges has a director of his photo i wish i had a director, a director of, of his photo archive. archive yes he does <laughs> I wish i had um, a director of my phone jeremiah do you have one of those <laughs> oh do i need one <laughs> <laughs> um they also write that project updates w can be found on silvergrainclassics.com that's the magazine's website um the reason they they're doing it with the magazine is because these guys apparently have a good like contacts into into the German camera manufacturing scene and OPC. Um, now having read about it, sort of feels like it makes sense. And uh, they also wrote about a future crowdfunding initiative. So there is most likely going to be some form of a Kickstarter when they are ready to to make this a bit more public and talk about it. Right now you don't really get a lot of information other than what's in this article. Um, but... They're working on it. That's all I can say. And so there we go. The White Lux. Oh, cool. Uh, the White I, Lux yeah, with the, a double X at the end is um, is apparently on its way. That's so, how you know it's better than the old one, isn't it? Because it's, it's got, got two X's. X's. <laughs> <Just like. laughs> and uh, and on another manufacturing jag, we have another mm. camera or camera manufacturer. That we'd like to uh, introduce, since uh, Adrian well, know, knows these people very well. Speaking oh, I don't know that I know them very well, but I have met them once or twice, I think, but uh, only on an <laughs> exhibition floor rather than actually knowing right. them. But speaking of a, of a of a bit of a film revival, we had that over the last months. There were different camera announcements, and of course, one of the companies who um, made 
years ago made large format photography affordable was Intrepid. And <clears throat> they started with a simple um, a plywood 4x5 and uh, they, they worked their way up to more advanced models and uh, other things. And they have uh, oh, last year talked publicly about that they wanted to make a lens. And uh, that's the thing you can't really get. You can get new 4x5 cameras. There are no lens makers anymore who make lenses for them. There are no shutter makers. So you need an old, I don't Copal. know, Copal shutter or something. Um, they need to be serviced because they are fully mechanical. And uh, so Intrepid attacked that problem. And they have now a Kickstarter running with their new shutter and their new lens. Which is amazing. So nice. Um, what we're looking at is uh, an electronic shutter. I, I mean, the shutter is mechanical, but it's electronically um, triggered. Triggered, yeah, triggered and set and so on. Comes with a, a remote with a display on it that also I think holds a rechargeable battery, so it has a USB charging slot, and it's a Copal Zero size uh, lens holder in there so all your copal zero lenses will work in it um shutter speeds from a 20 one from a 125th second to um to longer shutter speeds and you don't really need shorter on a large format camera um you have like a self timer flash control so that you can you can hook up flashes and uh the lens that they came up with is 150 millimeter f6.3 which is which is the normal focal length for a large format camera for a 4x5 so it's like a 50 millimeter on a on a full frame camera and um the examples they show of uh, the photography it's a cook triplet design which is a fairly standard but fairly reliable design as far as i know um and um, yeah, they have they have kicked this off on Kickstarter. The campaign is as as of today, which is the fifth of October, is still eighteen days to go. They pledged uh, some thirty thousand euros. They are at one hundred and thirty thousand right now, so that thing is definitely flying. Um, and the thing that I find interesting is that it's not that expensive if you're into large format photography. The lens on its own through Kickstarter is $250 roughly. That's not much That's for a pretty impressive. brand new lens. The yeah, shutter, it's good. You can get two and shoot in stereo. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the shutter is $380 on Kickstarter. So um, they bundle the shutter and the lens for another perk there for $550. A shutter and a lens, an electronic shutter. And then last but not least, they have a camera shutter lens and camera bundles on Kickstarter that begin at about $950. That's pretty impressive for that a large is format camera. majorly expressive. Camera. I mean, just think about it. If you want to if you buy a fresh new 4x5, let's say a, a, a Chamonix or something, that'll set you back. 1200 1300 sure. just the camera um a lens a used lens and that's the only one you can get right now a used i don't know schneider kreuznach or uh, other kinds of typical large format lenses um that'll set you back anywhere from 500 bucks upwards um a shutter yeah sure you need one of those too so this this is this is a very impressive offer that they're making there it, it is they're, they're an impressive bunch they, they always have been actually um like i say i don't know them as friends but i, I have, have had occasion to, to speak to one or two of them over the years um and they just keep going right they yeah they started off with something innovative and they just keep innovating um, so you know uh so so uh I, at one level I, i'm surprised to see this because this is you know um it's a bit different from what they've done in the past because they they, they they've done the less overtly technological things in the past if that makes sense um but this uh but but at another level i'm not surprised at all because 
you know they're just applying their normal innovative approach to to something different so it's, you know uh, but but what they I, I think what they did um okay the initial camera again uh, plywood bit a bit like simple in the beginning but now they have really upped their game what the, yeah, the yeah. quality the the second thing is they um and Jeremiah just earlier when we prepared the show talked about that they have um come up with a with a they, you have a conversion kit that you can make the camera into an enlarger in a large format and yes. larger yeah, yeah, yeah. so they have some manufacturing expertise now when it comes to the led stuff and the bundling and the um the, the accessories. I've, got, I've got a couple of friends who've got the intrepid enlarger actually they speak highly of it so. oh they they do because yeah. you know if you're enlarging it by tens that's a significant issue right oh and and a, a large format and larger uh, try very coming, expensive try to come by one of those for if you can uh, find affordable one price yeah if you can yes. find one so and a camera i mean it's just a reverse camera it's like a generator being a sure. motor it's the same thing um so i find this really impressive and then having this bundle out for under a thousand bucks holy cow that is that's well, wild we that's certainly wild. wish them the best and and uh you know, uh, the temptations are great. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we do have two to, uh, two intrepid cameras from the first batch here in the house, um, and it might be time for an upgrade. So, hmm. yeah, I have a four by five, <laughs> but um, I haven't used it in a while, and uh, this electronic shutter is very attractive. We um, we used to do workshops here, large format workshops. So, um, m might be time to revive them possibly yeah so I have to come over to germany sure hang out absolutely um yeah so that was our little update episode and yeah. uh how about some picks i do have a pick i'll kick off with mine because that is exactly what we just talked about i am picking the kickstarter of intrepid uh, intrepid shutter and lens because i think it's amazing it is spectacular what they're doing so, link in the show notes. Check it out. Um, Lots Adrian. of photos of Brighton. <laughs> Sorry, that one, that one you've got shown on the screen at the moment, I know exactly where that is. There's a hotel at the top of that thing, and I've actually stayed in in the past. That's, there you go. that's pretty close to where they are, I guess, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Adrian, you brought us a fountain pen. I bought a pen. I just bought a new pen this week just for ah. this week, right? So, so Talk about climbing out of a rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. So, so I can I can share share this right to the camera. I don't know that my camera will actually focus on it because it's too. It's trying. It's trying. Never mind. Um, yeah. Hold it so up again. Uh, hold it up again. I'll, I'll full screen again. you. There we oh, go. Oh, okay. I'm not sure I'll be able to get it to focus. Hold it. Yeah. Sorry. In front of your eyes, Ned. Too close. Too yeah. close. Too close. There we go. Yeah, just there we go. Like okay. that, just oh, yeah. okay. like that. Right. Okay. So Looking this good. is. So this is, I think, my third one of these. Uh, the Caveco Sport, German German company, Caveco. It uh, is. Make yeah. a ma they make amazing fountain pens. Um, I happen to favour a a one point one mil nib. It's a bit of what they call a stub nib, which gives you kind of an italic script. Uh, and I have uh, this is the steel one I bought this week. I have an al aluminium one in black. There's the man. This is one. very much in line there's, with the with the, whole the analog the, uh, theme, black. right? Black yeah. aluminium one, yeah. And Excuse I think me, I've got are, are those the devices that that cheapy you plastic use ones, for right? what we used to call writing? Oh, what is writing that writing is thing cool. you're talking about? Writing is cool, um, and uh, and and fountain pens are cool. Everybody get a fountain pen, uh, and the Caveco Sport, the design itself, you can get them in anything from about ten dollars to a, a, or your rose. Yeah, you got one yeah, as well, yeah. have you, Chris? Oh, is no, that, is that a twist? It's not a Caveco. It's a it's a Japanese. Um, a Japanese, um, what do you call yeah, it? Yeah. Throwaway kind of. But hey, speaking, oh, speaking okay. of fountain pens, uh, this crossed my desk last week that somebody is coming up with a fountain fountain pen that takes all kinds of of cartridges, like fill your okay. own or from any anyone. It adapts inside the, I guess, the body of the pen to accommodate any number of. Um, that's inputs. cool 
Yeah, like that. that yeah, that's cool because there are different. There are some. There's never a proper standard of cartridges for fountain pens, but, but yeah. Anyway, so that my pick of the week is is the Caveco Sport fountain pen. Uh, yeah, very affordable. Even the most expensive ones are not actually expensive, especially if photography is one of your other hobbies. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, compared to Jeremiah's new Leica Q three forty three, which is on next week's show, um, <laughs> then uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a car basically <laughs> it's a car you take pictures with all right and then last but not least jeremiah you brought us i did fashion photography well two of my favorite kind of subjects having been a fashion photographer and martin parr when you put them together it's just fun and this is he, he evidently has a new book these are uh commission pieces from vogue uh, obviously a, a piece, but nobody doesn't like him. <laughs> this is a very good example of uh, his work, aesthetic, color, and interpretation of a, you know, a, of a vibe, a subject, and they stand on their own beyond fashion, uh, their social commentary, they're beautifully done, they're rendered great, and uh, I love Martin Parr, so there you go. Um, I'm, I'm very down with this. What's not to like about cool. Martin? Paul? Yeah, uh, just to put a smile on our face, and there you go. And to have another photographer to look at. All right. Yes. Well, I guess that uh, brings us to the end of this episode. Thanks, everyone, for being here. We have a website that's thefuturephotography.com. We have a actually put that on the screen here i can make things appear on the screen and then uh, we do have um well a lot of episodes of this podcast wherever you find your podcasts just type in the future of photography or you can find us on youtube and um and watch us and enjoy and, la and laugh enjoy our, at our quirkiness and enjoy people yeah. and our um, genuine humanness. Yeah. And just genuine <laughs> enjoy people wearing funny glasses and things. That's okay. Right. Current currently we are human. Um it would be hard to generate that this convincingly just yet, Certainly so. this month it will be. Yeah. yeah. So um that was it. Thanks for being here. Join us on our Discord where we um chat directly with you. If you, if you want to share things yeah. and uh, have get our inputs directly, um, that's a good place. Link is in the show notes. Um, and our new sign-off. Stay curious. And stay <laughs> human. Stay human. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Hold up. 